always fresh every day. You're watching Fast Lane Daily. <laughs> Nissan says the GTR is ready for the world's racetracks. Will the new Skyline dominate or will Porsche exact its revenge? We'll have more. Also, the first Audi R10s hit the auction block, the Toyota Hybrid hits the sushi bar, and a new Lambo leaks online. All that, plus Commenter of the Week, and the Lotus Exige S240 is in FL Detours. What's up, everybody? I'm Derek D, and you're watching Fast Lane Daily, my favorite show. Fast Lane Daily with Derek D, always fresh every day. Nissan says the GTR won't remain a mere street machine. The company confirmed today a race tuned version will make its FIA GT1 class racing debut as early as next year. It's the product of Nissan Motorsports division Nismo. That in partnership with UK based racing team Giggle Wave Motorsport, a competitor in the FIA GT championship since 2007. Nissan hasn't revealed specs on the GTR race car yet, but insiders say it will get power from the same 4.5 liter V8 engine as the company's Japanese Super GT race car, not the street model's twin turbo 3.8 liter V6. We'll know more as the GT1 GTR debuts in a few non-championship races this year as part of shakedown testing. And the first two US spec Audi R8 V10 models sold for charity in Florida this week. And despite the global economic downturn, thunder, boom, craziness, the two R8s managed to raise 850,000 bucks. The new R8s are of course powered by the same 5.2 liter FSI V10 found in the new Lamborghini LP560-4 though the Audi is detuned to 525 horsepower. Bidders pushed R8 V10 number one to a price of 500 grand, with the second fetching 350,000 bucks. And that might be chump change compared to what the cars will sell for in 30 years to our new zombie overlords. Let's hope they still trade in money and not brains. And it's not quite sushi, but Toyota's latest green car does have something in common with the salmon hand roll. The company is showing off a new hybrid concept car this week in Australia made from seaweed. It's called the One x x The unknown fraction represents Toyota's push for a future hybrid-powered car with a fraction of the environmental footprint of today's cleanest cars. The frame of the One x is made from lightweight carbon fiber reinforced plastic, but the roof and other parts are made from bioplastic derived from seaweed. The hybrid powertrain in the ultra-lightweight One x combines a plug-in lithium-ion battery pack with a 500cc flex fuel engine in a system that is one-fourth of the total weight of the Prius powertrain. No matter whether it comes with miso soup or an egg roll. You can find out more of those and other stories at the FLD News Feed. That's FastLaneDaily.com slash feed. I believe it's right over here. It just came in. Next up, Lamborghini with even more Alcantara. Those poor defenseless creatures. That's in the internet rumor mill coming up, coming up right after this. FastNDaily.com, you can be the editor in chief. You just go to FastNDaily.com slash feed, submit your stories. Also, we're on Tumblr, Alan. You know that? You know that, Lens? What's Tumblr? Tumblr.FastNDaily.com. Go there and you can catch up on the production. Also, for you Twittering folk, Twitter.com slash FastNDaily. Go there and you know we, we keep you up to date, like up to the minute stuff of what we're doing. So go check that out. Right? Welcome back, and it's Commenter of the Week time. Commenter of the Week. Comment our show. Yeah, Commenter of the Week. Comments. This week's comment is regarding the Intelligent Learning Navigation, or ILENA system by BMW. It comes from some dude called, my name is not Alfredo. And he wrote, if that intelligent car ever started playing Daisy, I would get out, douse it with gasoline, light a match, and run like hell. I don't need to go through something like this. Alina, open the trunk. I'm sorry, I can't do that, James. No freaking way. Well, those of you who don't know, Daisy is a reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey when the computer takes over the spaceship. I doubt Alina will start singing Daisy and take over your car, although she may have one leg shorter than the other. Get it, Alina? One leg shorter? Thanks for the comment, dude, whose name is not Alfredo. Keep those comments a-flowing, because we keep a-reading them. Let's move on. New word on Lamborghini's new LP650-4 Roadster leaked to an online fan forum this week. A marketing presentation likely from Lambo itself offers new details on the limited edition Roadster ahead of its top secret launch in Geneva next month. The drop top will get the same 6.5 liter V12 from their Aventon, producing 650 horsepower. That'll get the Roadster from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.4 seconds. 
The real story is the custom high-touch interior made from acres of leather and Alcantara. All that'll be held together with enough custom stitches to keep the company's artisans in solid gold thimbles. What is the price for all this lavishness? That'll be 400,000 bucks, or about 1,100 a month for 30 years plus interest. And if you still want the performance of a supercar without the swankness, try on the Lotus Exige S240. That's today on FL Detours, right now with Michael Spinelli. I'm Mike Spinelli, Fastlane Daily Writer, and today we've got the latest mid-size sedan. Psych! The founder of Lotus Cars, Colin Chapman, was obsessed with making things lighter. He even tried to build buildings out of aluminum. But luckily he failed at that and turned his attention to sports cars. Now about 50 years some odd later, here we are in the Lotus Exige S240. So like its Lotus siblings, the Elise and the other Exige models, the S240 has a motor sourced by Toyota. But compared to the Exige S, the S240 has 20 extra horsepower. And in a car as light as the Exige, those extra horses mean the difference between a lightning bug and lightning. It's a great buzzy little motor that produces plenty of torque on its own. However, in the Exige S and in the S240, like this one, it's got a supercharger. Whoa! The steering wheel is tiny. It's like driving a small pizza, and I should know. One of the cool things about this traction control system is that you can actually dial out some of the understeer that plagued some of these Lotus models in the past. So what you give up in comfort and luxury, because let's face it, there's not a whole lot in this interior, you get back in a perfectly engineered, well-balanced, excellent handling, beautifully accelerating sports car, a pure sports car from Lotus that fits Colin Chapman's legacy like a glove. Bottom line is the Lotus Exige S240 is a hand-built budget supercar that's about as true to its roots as any modern sports car could be. Colin Chapman would be proud. For FLD Tours, I'm Mike Spinelli. Thanks, Mike, and uh, we're going to need you to bring the car back, so Maybe you can bring the car back. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, that about does it for Fastlane Daily today. I'm Derek D, and for all you people wondering, I have ordered my car. It is ordered. I don't have it yet. That's why there's been no pictures or video or everything. Okay? It's ordered. We'll keep you updated every week. I'm Derek D. You have a lovely day. Fastlane Daily. <laughs> <laughs> One Bravo would. Derek, you know you're really short. You're on your, she's on her tippy toes and they're for you. Always fresh, every day. She's killing eels from New Jersey and he's like eight feet tall. Kathleen Daly.